Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Uh, today is going to be, for the first time since the holiday started, um, my first thrift flip video. And I need an antique mirror at my house uh, for an area that I'm redecorating, and I just wasn't able to find one, but I had this large mirror here. And I'm going to figure out how to make it look like an antique mirror. And I think the first thing that it's going to need is some molds on it, just to add a little more detail. So this is one that I had made up with some resin. And I'm adding hot glue to this and tight bond. So the main thing that I'll be gluing this with is the tight bond. And then here and there, I'll add just a little bit of hot glue so that it will hold while I wait on this to dry. And because I left my tripod at the house today, uh, I had to make do with my overhead camera, which meant that the whole mirror couldn't be in focus. So I'm just gluing these little molds on each corner. And then I just took some black paint and just very lightly went over some of the area or the majority of the area, I guess. I kind of dry brushed it on because I, I, I'm going to be doing a crackle finish on this, but I didn't want uh, much of that metallic look showing through. So, for the most part, I covered that up, and then I let that dry well. And then I put one coat of Dixie Belle's Crackle Medium on it. And then once that Crackle Medium dried, then I went over it with a good thick coat of uh, Dixie Belle's buttercream. Now I wanted this to look old and crackly, but uh, if you've ever did a crackle finish, you know that uh, although it's very pretty, uh, it can be obvious that you've done a crackle finish on it. And I didn't want that. I wanted this just to look old and layered and crackly. So what I did was I put this first coat on and then let that dry and I got a really good crackle finish that was really pretty. But again, I wanted this to look old and crackly. So once this coat dried, then I put another coat of the crackle medium on it. And then I let that dry and did a second coat of the uh, Dixie Belle's buttercream. And what that did was uh, it showed the crackle through. It gave it a good cracked finish, but it also uh, made it look kind of thicker and clumpier and like it had layers of paint on it. And then so much of the dark didn't show through the crack. So it just looked like a lot more natural crack uh, or crackle and, um, just a lot more um, more authentic looking old chippy look. And then I also took a little scraper and scraped here and there just a little bit. It came off pretty easily uh, so that I had some little chips here and there. And I really like the look that I got on this. And as you can see there, especially on the top, it just makes it look like it's just old and crackly. And then I finished this off with a clear coat and um, so that it would protect and seal that paint. And now for the next piece, many of you will recognize this one. It's one that I did last year and I, I put a transfer on this one, uh, but it, it hasn't sold and you can probably see why it hasn't sold uh, because it started pulling yellow and I did clear coat this one. I'm pretty sure this one got a clear coat first, but um, for some reason it really pulled that yellow. So I decided to paint this one black instead. So I used the color Caviar, which is also a Dixie Belle color, and went over this whole thing with two coats of the color Caviar. And I went over this and gave it a light sanding, especially over the transfer on the front and the back because uh, I wanted to make sure and smooth that out so that it didn't try to pull up 
uh, when I painted over it. But I'm doing more of a French country look today, so I feel like the black will work well with that. So once I get two coats on this and let it dry well, uh, then I will finish it off with a clear coat because I'm going to be adding, and I'm just using a clear matte finish, and I'm using the Dixie Bell clear matte finish top coat, I guess. And that's obviously how I would finish off uh, after I've painted with chalk paint, but I'm also going to be adding a transfer to this, and so I wanted to make sure that it stuck well. So um, again, I let this dry and add that top coat and then let that dry well and then um, and then I'll add my transfer. So the transfer that I'm using is called the is called Secret Letter 2 and that's a redesign with Prima transfer. And I'm using it because it is white and it will show up good on this and it has that French country look. So I just cut enough of this sheet to fit there on the front, and I'm not going to worry about doing the whole front. Uh, I just want some of this to give it some extra interest. And once I got the transfer on, then I went over the whole thing with some black wax, and that will do two things. One is uh, any little area that some wax needs to fill in, it will fill in. Uh, and then um, where the paint may be soaked in a little too much. And so that will even out the color. And it will also kind of uh, fade this white and let it not be so stark. And I forgot to mention that I took my little finger sander and sanded a little here and there uh, just to give it more of a distressed look and of course it went down to a lot of that white which was fine I still like that look uh, it actually kind of brings this script together with the rest of it but then again when I go over the whole thing with the black wax it will also tone the distress down and as you can see it just really gives it more of an even look So I've had this little bowl of sorts, uh, and it's silver plated. It isn't real silver, and um, I'm going to put the two of these together. This candle, oversized candle stick, uh, pillar holder, I guess, and uh, I'm going to clean both of them up and paint the the pedestal part, the candle holder part in the color buttercream and I put two coats on that and and then I'm going to glue both of them together and I'm going to use tight bond thick and quick but honestly even better than that to use would be E6000. So again this is going to get two coats of the color buttercream and then once it's dry I'm just going to take a baby wipe and do some light distressing on it and then I'll glue them together actually I think I glued them together before I did my distressing and then I sealed my paint in with some clear matte finish from Dixie Belle and then this one was complete Now this next one is going to be very, very simple. So this is just one of those little square wall hangings that you see. At, I'm not sure exactly what to call this, a medallion of sorts. And um, I love these little things because they can fit into almost any kind of decor. But this one has a little too much yellow to suit me. So uh, I'm painting this one in the color buttercream. And I'll put two coats on this and let it dry well. And then instead of uh, using a baby wipe on this one, I'm going to just uh, take 
my finger sander and just really sand uh, on some of the ra raised areas and um, and get this one very distressed. And actually, the more distressing I did on this, the more I wanted to add because uh, it just gave it a really chippy look. And I, I love that chippy, chippy look. And then once I get enough distress on this one, then I finish this off with a clear matte finish, also from Dixie Belle. And um, this one was complete. And now for this next one, I'm doing a, tea, a silver plate teapot. And as you can see, there's a lot of worn areas where it's going down to, I guess maybe it's brass underneath. And it's just not an attractive look. So I wanted to keep some of the silver plate on this. And the little stand that it's on and the handle uh, and even the lid has a lot of silver on it. You don't see all that worn area. So I want to keep those in the silver plate and I'm just gonna carefully trim out around those and paint just the body of this and, um, and just leave all the rest. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit there on the lid that's worn, but that doesn't bother me and I feel like I need to leave that. And this is going to need two coats, but I wanted to try something a little different and uh, do a crackle finish on this and give it some texture. So what I did was I did one coat of the buttercream and then I let that dry. And then I took uh, some crackle medium and that's a Dixie Belle product. It's a very good product of theirs uh, because it really produces a lot of crackle finish. So what I did was this first coat, and you're gonna see a little bit of the silver underneath it. It's, it needs another coat pretty badly. And so before I added my next coat, I, I just let that dry and then put that crackle finish on it. And then I painted the second coat on. And what that did was, because that crackle medium is pretty thick, uh, it added some texture and then it produced a lot of crackle. And um, I really like the look of that because you got some of that darker showing through. You wouldn't think that you would see the crackle over this lighter color, but because I had enough um, of the darker areas where it needed another coat, it was just perfect. And I guess if you wanted it to show up even more, you could uh, maybe take some Dixie dirt or something and work into those cracked areas, but I didn't want to change the color of this one, so I didn't do that. And again, I got plenty of crackle and plenty of texture. Now, the thicker you go with this, I think the more cracks you get and the more texture that you're gonna get. So I actually went pretty thick on this. And then once I got this on and let that dry, then, uh, then I added my next coat of buttercream, and then you can just almost watch those cracks appear. And if you, uh, I just hit this one with a blow dryer, and when you do when you do that, you can see them appear pretty quickly. You can also use a heat gun. And when you're doing a crackle finish, uh, you want to only do one coat. Uh, if you have to stroke another stroke over it. Uh, then just do it minimally. Do just as little as you can get away with doing and still cover up your paint good. And it's good to keep your strokes in the same direction, of course, around that, uh, around the handle and the spout. I won't be able to do that. And I don't know if you can see all that crackle on there, but it does have plenty of crackle finish. But it's more of a natural. It doesn't look like you've purposely done it. Now I have this stamp set from IOD and my friend Myra sent it to me 
and this is the twall stamp and i just love this one it and i want to do because i'm doing a french country uh, i don't think anything says french country more than this so i'm going to use this same one there's lots of pieces to this one but i just liked this one on the on the teapot and you just kind of have to be very careful and hold it in place and the good thing is you're not looking for perfection but uh, it actually did work pretty good and so i did the same one on both the front and the back of this teapot and then once i got this stamping on it that i wanted then i just took some of that clear coat from dixie bell and finished this off and i just love how this one turned out i think it has a very very french country look And now I have some beautiful hang tags to show. And these are from Claudia from Oklahoma. And don't you just love this first one? I love the nativity scene there. And the shape of this one is just very interesting and, and such a neat look. And also this sweet little angel. And I love the classic look of this next one. I just love the holly and the holly berries with the writing behind it. And I always love to see scripture on these hang tags. And so there's some beautiful scripture on the other side. And this next one has a beautiful bird on it. And I just love, love the colors on this bird. And I just love how she layered uh, an, a completely different look behind it and then added some texture with the fabrics. And this one is just absolutely gorgeous. And the next one is from Oklahoma, where Claudia is from. And I just thought it was really neat. I like seeing you guys incorporate the area that you live in your hang tags. I'm not mentioning Claudia's last name because uh, she she only signed it Claudia. So, uh, but thank you so much for the beautiful, beautiful hang tags. Since this will be my last video until uh, after Christmas, I will post again on Tuesday. Uh, but I just wanted to take this time and um, tell you how much I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, I just think that I have awesome, awesome viewers. I pray that you get plenty of time with your family and uh, plenty of time to celebrate the birth of our wonderful, precious Savior. And thanks again for supporting my channel this past year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.